Hi, Hi, I'm Dr. Anjali Bagra, an internist at Mayo Clinic specializing in stress management and resiliency. And I'm Dr. Susie Mosler, an anesthesiologist subspecializing in pain medicine. We are joined today by Dr. Mariela Rivera, chair of the Somos Latinos Mayo Clinic Employee Resource Group and medical director of the Surgical Simulation Center at Mayo Clinic Rochester. Welcome, Dr. Rivera. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We uh, know of you very much, and that's why we asked you to talk on the topic we did for, for GRIT for Women in Medicine. But before we dive into that, can you tell us a few interesting things about yourself? Well, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation and uh, to do this. A little bit about myself. I'm from Puerto Rico. That's home for me. I trained there as a general surgeon, and then came to Mayo to do my fellowship in surgical critical care. My plan to be one year, Mm -hmm. But my husband fell in love with Rochester. I have no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> we wonder. <laughs> and, and we're still there. I'm very happy to have the opportunity to work at the Mayo Clinic. My specialty is within trauma critical care and general surgery right now. And my passion is also surgical education. That's wonderful. And of course, within the education sphere, you're also a program director. Correct. I'm a program director right now for the surgical critical care and I have a minor role as an associate program director for the general surgery residency. Do you have a clone? Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, more titles than can fit into one human body, I feel. Well, more power to you. It's phenomenal how you hold up the fort in so many different fields. And I would imagine to do something like this, you need a lot of qualities, including perhaps grit. So what does grit mean to you? Grit is like the food for my soul to wake up every day and, and do the job and do the job happy and better. And I think grit also is what I want to teach my daughters to have mm. so that they can, they can go out there and be empowered and, and be successful in whatever they decide to do in their lives. So, so That's I've heard you talk me. about your daughters before at mm -hmm. some of the diversity and inclusion events at Mayo. How many daughters do you we have? have? Three beautiful daughters. <laughs> well, we have no doubt. They've got to be beautiful. Yeah, and what if a role they, model they have. I know. Wow. Thank you. Rock star Thank role you. model. Yeah. yeah. So within as your role um, and you're a surgeon, which I'm that has all these things and images come to mind in the work you do is so important and, and difficult, I'm sure, at times. So you have that as part of your identity and your professional identity. And we asked you to talk about that. And can you, you did. thank you for agreeing, <laughs> first of all. And what, what were your initial thoughts when we... Uh, that I had no idea what <laughs> she asked me. <laughs> I'll take the blame. I, correct. <laughs> so I say, obviously, yes, and then I'll figure it out. That was what I well, thought. Yeah. And then um, I was, I did a little bit of research, and I talked to other people that had no idea what it was about. So it's been a journey to be, to, to come and present here for me, because I actually have learned about the importance of having a professional presence and a professional identity. So thank you. Well, <laughs> we are honored. Thank you for accepting our That's invite. Right. I, I would say that, you know, you exemplified the qualities that we've been talking over the past two days of leadership, of risk taking. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you <laughs> said yes, and it was a cookie that you were going to bite into and then figure out the details. I mean, I respect you for embracing that. Um, I know you're going to go live tomorrow, mm -hmm. and we've had a chance to review, you know, what you're going to talk about. What is the hook for professional identity that you will share with us tomorrow and that you would share with, with others? Perfect. Others? So I think that there are several things. First of all, we as a medical woman in medicine or as a medical field, we're late into this conversation. Uh, the data is medical students. The data is in business. They're actually class. They are they're training in this. And when I look into in training or, or information to us, there was nothing. And think about your, your um, uh, studies. Whoever talked to you about professional identity or, or a presence, how do you develop a presence in what you do? We're just thrown out there and we'll figure it out, like many things in, in our career. So I think that's, that's one important thing. The second thing is that we are developing a, a professional presence and identity every single day. And it's, and it's based in our backgrounds. So it's since birth, mm -hmm. all those experiences, but we have to stop and think about it, and we have to own it and define it. 
So that it's not what other people think, but what we, what we want them to think about us. What, when we set up in that meeting, how do they feel us or see us as, as women in, uh, in medicine? And uh, there's data out there saying that we are in a disadvantage when we don't have a professional presence. So I think those are the important cue concepts. And then um, I talk a little bit about how, how to do it, but the most important thing is to think about it, is, mm-hmm. to, is to make it a, a, a theme in your day. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, how I'm gonna react to X, Y, or C situations mm-hmm. that will agree with the personal, the professional identity or presence that I want to be. And Dr. Moshler talked about this earlier. I think within medicine, if we just look at medicine, we tend to compartmentalize. Like women in surgery tend to have a very stereo... I mean, they Mm -hmm. they actually step into it with an already existing stereotype threat because it is not a place where they find many other. So is there, like, in your preparing through this and in your you know, readings and your viewpoint on professional identity. Are there differences within different pockets of medicine? The information out there is think about who do you want to be as a professional Mm -hmm. in the future so that then you can look for role models. That is what is out there. Again, within surgery, that's not something that is discussed at all. It is not, nobody have ever told, told me about the importance of having a presence, a professional presence. But what's scary is that you have one. Mm-hmm. It's just we don't think about it. We don't own it. We don't work toward it. And I think that's, that's the key. Yeah, and I think what you're pointing to is the intention with what mm-hmm. we need to do it because we will otherwise go through our each day, getting through the day, mm-hmm. you know, seeing our patients, taking, you know, interacting with colleagues, documenting in the EHR, and... Our favorite part. Right, right. That, I, best for last there. And, um, but, but really with intention, and you said aligning that with our overall goal, our goal of where we want to be and who we want to be. So do you find yourself um, talking to your fellows or residents um, or in a way about this, or do you intend to... I am, in, I am doing it, Yeah. Mm-hmm. thanks to the invitation. Yes. <laughs> it was not part of my vocabulary or in my, or in my teaching or the education, or when I talked to the medical students as a mentor, it wasn't, and now I see the importance of it. So yes, I do intend to include it in, in, within the education part. And I think, too, the importance of educating, and um, certainly your daughters, your sons, mm-hmm. my children, about... Um, the presence and the identity that we form or that is formed on social media. Correct. And, and Correct. that being professional and for medical students and trainees mm-hmm. will end and where we're at and, and um, someone's, you know, watching and recording. Mm-hmm. And I briefly mentioned that in the, in the talk tomorrow because there is information about how do you develop a, a professional presence mm-hmm. in the social media. And the different apps. Um, I was, to my surprise, even Pinterest. I don't think about Pinterest as something professional, right? But yeah, it, people are using it in 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 that form as well. And I will touch base about what to, th- how to protect yourself in the social media and the things that you need to think about, right? Privacy, mm-hmm. and then do you mix that professional, that personal? And there's there's um, uh, evidence um, that. The more that you project yourself as both, not only the professional, but also your personal side, because we're one person, yeah. right? Yes. And I think right now, people are looking for, for people, not just a surgeon, mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, they're looking for that person behind. And I think social media is, is a, a perfect platform for that as well. Well, certainly it's uh, you know, used well. It can be a jump starter to connections. Um, that can be meaningful and, and increase your reach and, and a platform to have your presence Correct. Uh, spread out wider than traditional one-on-one meetings. I'm peripherally aware of transitions within our lives in training or you know careers um, affecting professional identity formation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know with our internal medicine residents, one of my colleagues, Dr. Adam Swatsky, does a lot of work on this. I've just become very conscious of, you know, when a group of learners or trainees Mm -hmm. are transitioning into the roles of, you know, being, you know, full-fledged physicians working on their own. That's when there's a lot of 
vulnerability. Correct. Um, and it affects identity formation. What's been your experience with this? I think it's a vulnerable thing, especially if we don't think about it. Yeah. And that's where the intention comes into action. I think that can help that transition. If, if you visualize yourself, who's going to be me as a consultant? Mm -hmm. What are the things that I want to be in this situations? And I, I think if you have that at least um, a goal to go to, it will be easier to work toward that goal. And I think that that can improve those transitions. You shared your path with us. You had a transition. You moved from um, one country to another, mm -hmm. and you do a lot of work in the DNI workspace. Does that affect professional identity from formation? Yes, in my case, affected in a in a very positive way because. Um, mm -hmm. um, Coming from a, from a different background and going through an experience of staying a male and, or staying in my new job as a, from fellow to um, staff, I needed that community. And I needed my, my Latino community. The in-group. Yes. Where you belong, I, right? I missed it. Yeah. And when there was the opportunity to, to work with the, with the Somos Latinos or, or the marriage group at the Mayo, clinic, I, I saw it as an opportunity of something that I could identify myself with, and I mm -hmm. wanted to be identified. I want, now that I think about it, right? Mm -hmm. That's definitely something that I want to be part of my professional identity, that I am a Latino, mm -hmm. and that I, I, I have, I can support this community and, and bring that to other staff that then are coming in. That's, like that. that's incredibly powerful, and for our listeners, just to uh, regarding the merges, which are Mayo employee mm -hmm. resource groups. So it's basically affinity groups where people okay. with similar interests or backgrounds come together and serve as a resource group for employees, but also businesses, because these are evolving into business resource groups right. eventually. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a great innovation. Yes. Right? And we're talking <laughs> about that. Well, can you um, share with us the three kind of takeaway points or things in terms of your talk? to highlight um, messages for our listeners? So again, we're late to this conversation. Mm -hmm. We have to own it today. There's no time. We have to think about it, what, what we have to envision, close our eyes and envision who are we? What is our professional presence every single day? Are there things that I need to fix? Are there things that I need to work on? The second thing is research. We need more information. Again, if we're more intent, then maybe we start doing more research within ourselves, our population, I should say, the mm -hmm. staff, um, because there's some gap in, in there. And, and um, it's doable. The other thing I, I want to mention is that I think we as women try not to think about that. We, 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 the opposite, we want to hide. I think this is a permission to be out there and put yourself out there and be authentic, be yourself. And, and take all that all that background and and make it into a positive thing. And it's awesome to be different, and it's as awesome to be in a diverse group. It's a strength. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, this has been so fabulous. Thank you so very much for sharing your talent, your wisdom, your knowledge, and all your rich experiences with us. We are delighted that you're part of Grit, and thank you for joining us for the podcast. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs>